Hello and welcome to Easy Hide's Quick Start Tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering the initial setup steps before we can start using Easy Hide as well as how the system works in a game scene. To get started let's go ahead and open up the welcome screen. So we'll go Dizzy Media, Easy Hide, Easy Hide Welcome. And as you see we have the welcome screen here which just gives you a little bit of information on how to do the setup. You can use the documentation button to find the documentations as well as the Easy Hide code snippets. Here we'll click the setups tab which gives us a brief description of what we need to do before we can import the additional components. Once we make the code edits in Easy Hide code snippets which are included here then you can actually import the additional components and start using the system. So we've made the edits to the Horror FPS kit and now we're ready to import the additional components. I'll just click the button down here, yes import and then as you can see we'll have hide handler and the updated easy hide menu. So we'll import that and now the system is ready to be used. Let's go ahead and open up the demo scene and see what we have going on. So go scenes, EH demo. Here in the demo scene I have a few different setups to show how the system can be used diversely. We have a trigger area, a locker, and under the table, and a crevice. So let's take a deeper look at how these setups are working. The first one we're going to check out is the hide area trigger. This area is using a box collider under the is trigger, and it's also under the ignore raycast layer. This means that any items or weapons or anything will not interact with this layer. On the hide handler trigger component, we have a few options in the user options. Active checks if the trigger should actually check when the player enters or not, and the actual player tag that we'll be using when we check the player. Also the auto find holder option which finds the enemies holder just under managers enemies holder. This holds all references of the enemies in the scene and is utilized for hiding the player from them. In the reference tab we have dynamic object which can be utilized for setups similar to the locker. So say we want to have a trigger area inside of the locker instead of actually using a different hide handler component. We can do that by using the dynamic object here and it checks if the door is open or closed when it hides the player. Last but not least we have the hide events which trigger when you enter, stay, or exit in the box collider trigger. And at the end we have the auto values which are automatically handled but are useful when you want to debug things during setup. The next setup we'll be taking a look at is the hide handler crevice. This setup uses the generic hide handler component is right over here and has a few different options that we need to set up and adjust before we can get things working correctly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the user options. Top here we have hide type which uses the locker, round, or table and the crevice. Depending on the hide type, it will use a different adjustment and settings per the hide movement. Here we have dynamic object settings. This checks if you have a dynamic object reference or not. If it does, then it will check the dynamic object to see if it's opened or closed. Here we have the lock settings. It checks if the player should be able to unlock and move around after the hide movement has initiated or not. And if not, then we want to keep it locked so that they can only move around the head and not the body. The actual enter state will check what the player will enter as, and the crevice will have it at stand. For under the table, we'll generally have it as crouch or prone. The current one just keeps the current state active. Same thing for the exit state. If we want to have it change, we can have it change to stand or crouch, and if not, we just keep it to the current one that's active. The item display options will handle if the items that the player is holding should hide or not. On the enter, right now we have it as hide, but if not, then we can just keep it as current, and if the player either has it out or not, then it will stay at the current state. Same thing for the exit, we can show or keep it at the current. The option below that, Adjust Character Controller, allows us to adjust the character's collider radius per the settings that we apply here. So if we want to hide inside of a small crevice, we'll change the radius to 0.2. Below that we have the actual hide action and movement settings, things like auto move, move weight, and move weight finish, which checks when the move will initiate and when it will finish. Then we have move and look speeds, which will handle how fast the movement of the player is, and the look speed when you want to turn and rotate towards a certain direction. The dynamic object weight and unlock weight and interaction weight all depend on what you're using in the references. Let's go ahead and check out the references real quick. 
close user options, click on references, open the tab here, and as you can see we have a few different things going on. Since this is a crevice and there's no door or interaction other than the initial hide interaction object, we'll just have the hide interact event here located inside of the crevice, which is a interact event using the event option, and then we'll have the hide handler player check player check for both interaction events. This allows the player to hover and interact with interaction objects without there needing to be a dynamic object present. Going back to the hide handler references, we'll see here that we have a few different transforms that are referenced. Hide move, unhide, and the wall rotation. The hide and unhide transforms are the positions in which the player will start and end when it does the hide movement action. So if we hide, we'll move to this transform, and if we unhide, we'll move over to this transform. The wall rotation is the rotation of the look direction when the player does the actual movement. In this case, we have it facing towards the wall, but we can really have it facing towards any direction that we want. Similar to the trigger setup, we have hide events. Here, we have hide, mid-hide, and unhide. Obviously, the hide and mid-hide happen when you're hiding or in the middle of the hide, and then unhide happens when you exit the hide. Last but not least, we have the auto tab. Here, just like the other one, has automatic values that are used during runtime. In this case, we have a 90 degree forward rotation. This is utilized when it's checking the rotation of when you're going to exit the hide. So here on the hide, we're using a 90 degree rotation. That rotation can be automatically grabbed getting the get wall rotation or get look at rotation buttons from the front of the component. Now that we have a decent idea of how the crevice setup works, let's go ahead and look at the locker. So here we have a locker that is set up with a mesh collider as well as a locker door that is using a dynamic object. The dynamic object has its own setup for the ignore colliders and the sounds and events. And here in the door event, we'll have a hide player check. Since we're using the actual dynamic object in the hide handler, it will be referenced here. So we'll have the locked door. The locked door is checking the hide player check, which checks when the door is opened and closed to check when the player is hidden. So here on the reference, we have the dynamic object on, and in the user options, we have dynamic object reference set. Similar to the crevice setup, we have the auto move and unlock weight settings all filled out so that they can be used when we do the hide action movement. Also, just like the crevice, we have the references of hide, unhide, and then look at transform. In this case, we're going to be moving from point A to point B and then rotating back around to look at point A again. And then we're going to open and close the door in between that action. So here we have the hide, unhide, and then look at referenced. The look at transform is facing back outwards of the locker and is at a negative 90 degree rotation. Here on the hide handler, we'll check that in the auto negative 90, which can be grabbed using the button right at the front of the component. One of the major differences between the locker setup and the crevice or table setup is that we're using an interaction collider reference. See, the thing is, is that when we have an interaction object, the object is hidden during the hide action. But since we don't want to hide the door, we have the actual interaction collider referenced and that is disabled when the move action occurs and then turn back on when it finishes. Now that we have a good idea of how the locker works, let's look at the hide handler table. In this area, the hide handler is allowing us to hide directly under the table no matter what standing or prone or in crouch state we're at. It'll move from point A to point B and then the same thing as the locker, look back at point A so that you can face outwards of the table. So let's look at a few options that we have set up here. In this case, it's set to ground. We're not using a dynamic object because it's not a locker and we're keeping the movement locked. We're moving the player into prone and on the exit, we're gonna have them stand back up. We're also going to allow them to keep any items or anything that they have out and not hide them when the move action occurs. In this case, we're not going to be adjusting the player controller and we have already the values for the movement set up. Just like the crevice with the locker setup, we have references for the hide, unhide, and look at transforms, which will be used when you move to and from and then look at during the hide action movement. Now that we've taken a look at all the backend setups and how everything works, let's go ahead and see them in action. Let's go up here, click play, 
and then we'll see those things working. I'm gonna grab my gun, and then I'm gonna walk over to this locker and pull it out and then hide. And as you can see, it will hide the gun, move me, and then unlock the actual look rotation. But I can't move around inside of the locker. And I'll press X again and hide, close the door, and there we go. We're now out of the actual hide action. Under the table, we can do the same thing. Hide, it'll move me, and then look back at the direction that I want it to. And when I unhide, I will stand back up, and now I'm not hiding anymore. In the crevice, we'll also do the same thing. Move, hide the weapon, and then it will look at the ball. And then at the end, if I'm facing downwards and unhiding, it will look back up and then move me outwards. Let's go ahead and try that with the zombie. So we're gonna shoot, boom, draw his attention, he sees me, and I'm gonna run into this trigger area. Now he can't see me anymore. And let's wait until he walks away. And we'll creep up into the door over here and we'll do the same thing. We'll trigger him to look at us and then we'll hide in the locker. Now he can't see us anymore and we'll wait until he leaves. And he walks away, exit, and now we're out of the hide action. Now we'll do the same thing for the table, crouch down, he sees us, and then hide in, under the table. Now he's walking away, because he can no longer see us. Where did he go? Oh no! Now we'll leave under the table, and we'll walk over here to the crevice, and do the same thing. We'll draw his attention, he can come in, and then we'll hide into the crevice. Now we're in the crevice, he can't see us, and we can wait until he leaves and then shoot him in the back. Now that he's gone, we'll exit, and then shoot him in the head. Poop, 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 poop. And there we have it. So that covers the initial setup steps and basic usage of Easy Hide. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to send me a message on Discord or on the forums. And again, thank you for watching.